And then there is a certain young man that I started to talk about when I was still at Nketa, when we were still at Nketa High School. We have been progressively, you know, growing in blasphemy. So I saw him in a vision struck by lightning. That's what I saw in a vision. There is a certain young man, he's been growing in blasphemy. Growing in fame and blasphemy. In fame and blasphemy. He has been engaged in a lot of blasphemy. So we must pray for him because he reveals to redeem. It's never too late. When you see things in a vision, it means there's opportunity, a small window of redemption. But God is just about to end. He is fed up. He is fed up. God is fed up. He is long suffering, but the cup of iniquity is filling for the young man. So we must pray for him. Look at your neighbor and say, Pray for him. Pray for him. Yes, I saw him walking, singing, dancing, as he normally does, very joyous, and lightning came from nowhere and struck him. It came from nowhere and struck him. And people were sorry. Some people were crying. Others were running away. When God decides to end, there is no one who can remain standing because God is God. So there is a limit to blaspheme. There is a limit to what? To blaspheme. Hallelujah. There is a limit to blaspheme. So... The way it will, okay, I will explain to you how the lightning will operate. I saw the young man become psychotic. You see, you will lose it. People will be thinking he's joking until you eat disappears from the public scene for some time when they are trying to treat him. You will become psychotic. God will cause him to lose his senses. And then when he regains his senses, because I saw... Daniel chapter 4. Look at your neighbor and say, You saw Daniel chapter 4. Say, You saw Daniel chapter 4. If you don't know the Bible, go and read Daniel chapter 4. That's what I saw. There is a king who was very arrogant, who was saying things which pompous words, which are potentially blasphemous as far as God is concerned. And God released an angel one of the watcher angels, to punish that king. And he lost his mind. For seven times, which is seven years, he lost his mind. When he regained his senses, he was now reasonable in his actions. So there is a very short window which this young man will be given. And then after the short window, I see him begin to abuse drugs. That's when he will become psychotic. He has experimented with the drugs in the past. And when he comes doing funny things, people will be thinking, ah, it's one of those things when he's actually high on drugs. He has abused the drugs in the past. So I saw him, God surrendering him to his lust, and he became psychotic. And then I saw him disappear. I saw him come back, and when he comes back, I saw the angels of God watching whether his behavior will change. After that, if his behavior does not change, God will completely destroy him. That's the end of the message about that young man. Next time, you won't hear me talk about the same young man. You won't hear me talk about the same young man. God does not need to duplicate himself. We have warned the young man. He has not listened. The Holy Spirit says, the window is what? Fast closing. The window is fast. Yes, if you decide to backslide, it's better to just backslide quietly. If you decide to want to backslide, it's better to backslide what? Quietly. If you decide to backslide, you don't backslide and mislead the people of God and blaspheme God. You will be playing with fire. Because our court is a what? Is a consuming fire. So it's a very small gap 
that court has left in the window. Very soon it will what? Close. And when it closes, you will see these words come to pass. And for that one, we won't do any reminder because we want him to repent. We want him in heaven. Let me tell you something about this young man. Because many people are confused about the young man. He has got a real calling from God. Do you understand me? He has a real calling from God. But because of the fact that uh, he didn't deal with the flesh before he became known, both the wheat and the tares are growing in the same person. Both the wheat and the what? The tares are growing in the what? In the same person. In the ordinary run of things, if God is to use you in higher dimensions, you have to be extremely highly consecrated to be a slave type of a person who has sacrificed most of their, their needs, even their legitimate needs. But sometimes it occurs for people who have got a strong calling, like the young men that I'm talking about. The young men that I'm talking about, according to what God had originally decided, this young man was supposed to inherit the mantle of the apostle who departed recently. So that's why he was attacked at the at an early stage. Demons, they knew that. Very high level evil spirits, they knew that. He was supposed to inherit that mantle and found churches all over the place. That was his calling. He is not even a prophet. They identify him as a prophet. His actual calling is that of an apostle. That's the actual calling of that young man. But the same way evil spirits from the throne of Satan assailed to Judas Iscariot because of his covetousness, that's the same tragedy which has happened in the life of that young man. There are times when I've prayed for the same young man in tears because I know his actual office in the kingdom of God. I want us as intercessors to rise up because even as I'm declaring this message, I feel pain in my heart because according to the mind of the Holy Spirit, you are supposed to be a soldier. You are supposed to inherit the mantle that this man dropped. That mantle is still floating in the air. We don't know whom God is going to allow to inherit the mantle. It's not even with the people who, who are in the denomination of that man who departed. It was supposed to be received by the young man. That's why I speak a lot about him. And people will be thinking, maybe I'm fighting him. Why would I fight someone who is called by the Almighty God? When I serve the same God, it's because my soul yearns for his repentance. It's because the Holy Spirit yearns for his repentance. It's because the Holy Spirit yearns for his repentance. Why should God destroy someone that Jesus Christ died for? Let us kneel and pray for him. Some of us will groan when we see apostles, young apostles, that God is raising for the next generation caught up in fornication, caught up in alcohol, caught up in drugs and covetousness. We cry. We cry. We cry before God. And I'm asking every intercessor in the house to groan for this young man. I'm asking everyone who is an intercessor to groan, to groan, to groan, to groan, to groan, to groan, to groan. To groan, to groan, to groan, to groan, to groan. Because there is a window of opportunity, says the Spirit of the Living God. There is a window. 
there is a window. There is a window for God to stay his anger. There is a window. There is a window. Hallelujah. We may stand. Hallelujah. We are going to continue in our different places to, to pray for him. If you are, if he belonged to the other side, I wouldn't have been talking about him. I would not trouble myself to talk about him. But because he belongs to the fold, we have to to do a wrestling for his soul. The pot of Christ is poor with him playing those games. Hallelujah. 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 So, God is a God to answer his prayer. We thank you, Lord. Come and fellowship with us at the Divine Kingdom Worship Center. Number 17, Josiah Chinamano Avenue and Bristol North Road. First floor, Belmont, Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. You must be fruitful and you must multiply. That's what he is telling you. That's why we were confessing at the beginning that we won't leave this place fruitless. And we declare that everyone here and also that side, even those who are following online, everyone without exception will be fruitful. Say, I refuse to be fruitless.